Hi all, in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to make ZBrush Startup with custom brushes, materials and a custom UI interface. Now this is a really simple tutorial, it's based on the way I like to start ZBrush and you can do a lot more advanced stuff than this, but if you just want to kind of have a little bit of flexibility and make it your own, then this is how to do that. I will also be linking my UI interface and my preferred brushes and materials down below. So one of the things you'll see in my videos is that I have a few customized pieces to my interface. So I have some brushes down here, I have a few more buttons up here, and I also have a few extra brushes in my brush palette here. So I first want to show you how to add these to your palette so that ZBrush loads in these as well as uh, some custom materials when you start up ZBrush, and it's really easy. So what we need to do is go to our ZBrush folder, and that is in C Drive, Program Files, Pixel Logic, and ZBrush 2022 or whatever version of ZBrush you are currently running. And then we want to scroll down until we find Z Startup. And in this is all the folders for your different things and anything you put in these folders will load up. So I have a few brushes and materials that I've put together already. So I advise you to go and look on the ZBrush website and even just type in on ArtStation or something like that. There are so many custom brushes and materials out there uh, that other people have made, that artists have made that are absolutely fantastic. Um, in terms of brushes, one of these things is the Orbs brushes, and especially the Orbs Crack Brush. It's something that I use all the time, and I've said many times on this channel to get. So I would check out Orbs work. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go to the Brush Preset folder in the ZBrush folder, and I'm going to select my custom brushes, and I'm just going to drag and drop them into here. And then you want to go back to Z Startup and to Materials, and we can drag and drop our materials into here. And then you might also want to do the same for alphas as well. Uh, there's some great free alphas out there and it's really useful to have a selection uh, handy to use while modeling. So now if we restart ZBrush, and let's just drop a object in here, go to edit mode. If we click on brushes, we can see that we have all them brushes loaded in on startup, ready to use straight away. And the same for our materials as well. We've now got a few extra materials. Okay then. So next we're going to look at the interface. So when you start up ZBrush, you get this or very similar to this. Um, now I don't like to overly customize my interface. There's a lot of people out there that like to make custom menus, um, custom right click menus and really kind of make it their own. But I like to stay quite close to the original ZBrush layout with just a few extra things to make life a bit easier. So uh, what we need to do is go to preferences and go to config and we want to enable customization. This will uh, kind of unlock ZBrush for you to start moving buttons around and stuff like that. The first thing I like to do is add a few buttons to the side of this palette here and I've been doing this for years and one of the buttons is uh, the activate symmetry button. So to move a button onto a UI, we want to find that button. So in this case, it's activate symmetry and we're going to hit control and alt and then left mouse button and drag that to where we want it. Now, the reason I put activate symmetry up here is um, because maybe because I'm an idiot, I don't know, but it's because I always forget that I've got symmetry active or should I say not active. So I might sculpt on one side of a face for about half an hour only to realize that I hadn't been sculpting on the other side and that's an absolute pain. I even need to redo the work again or I need to mirror it somehow. Um, so I find that having activate symmetry up here, uh, it's a nice big button and it's nice and highlighted when it's on so I can quickly see that it's on or off maybe even in my peripheral vision. I just find it a lot easier to work like that. Uh, but I also like to add some other bits of this as well. So just while we're doing this, what we can do is we can go to this menu and we can click on the menu icon here and just drag it into a side palette so we can quickly get to the rest of these buttons. And I'm just going to drag all the other bits of symmetry buttons here. And it doesn't really matter where you put them, just somewhere neat. So I'm going to place them underneath this and kind of use a similar layout to what is on here. And then I'm also going to put the radial button on and the radial slider. And I, I can never remember the exact layout of these, you know, you can shift them about quite easily, but I do use these quite a lot. So it's very handy just to have there. Now that's all I'm going to add to the top bar for now. I might add some more as I start sculpting and realize that there's other buttons I need, but for now that's fine. Now the other thing I like to do, which most people like to do is 
have a selection of your favorite brushes handy. And I like to just put them down here. I don't like to load out any more of these menus because I like to have as big a canvas as possible, but I do like to have a few of my favorite brushes down here. So one thing we can do is go to brushes and we can select a brush and the same again, control alt left mouse button and drag that place it here. But these buttons are quite big and we don't get as many of them placed here. So I'm just going to remove that. And I like to have smaller icons. So what I'm going to do is go to preferences, go down to interface UI, and I'm just going to turn off wide buttons. Now, if we go back to brushes, you can see that these buttons are a little bit smaller and they're also a bit smaller up here as well. I just find that a little bit easier. And also I can fit more on the screen at once. So at this point, I need to fill this menu out with some of my favorite brushes. So I'm just going to go through this and select some of my favorite brushes. So I'm going to have a clay build up and pinch and inflate damn standard. And we want orbs cracks, hates polish, trim dynamic. And there's possibly a few more, but these are the ones that I use most often. So now we go back to the brush palette. We can see we've got all them ones here, but the much smaller little brushes. So we can start to place these in here and we can fit a lot more of them in. Okay, now there's a couple more brushes that I like in here, but they're not in this menu. If we go to Lightbox and go to brushes, in this menu, you will find one in trim, and it is trim smooth border, an absolutely brilliant brush for doing rocks and stuff like that. So I'm gonna double click that one. Now that's loaded in here, we can go up here, find it in our palette and drag that in here. And I'm gonna go back to Lightbox again, and this time I want a smooth stronger, uh, a really useful brush to have and that is in smooth and this smooth strong is really great if you're trying to smooth off big areas on a very high uh, subdivided mesh so if we double click that then back in our palette we can find smooth stronger here as well and i like to have a few more but they are probably my most commonly used ones now when you reload zbrush these two bottom ones aren't going to appear here they need to be in z startup currently they're in one of the standard ZBrush files and they only show in the light box. So to get them to show here, every time you start ZBrush, you need to take them from the standard ZBrush folder and put them in Z startup. But if you download my file with all my brushes in, I've already done that. So you can just drag and drop that into your start ZBrush and these will appear every single time. So we can go back to preferences here and go to config and we can turn off enable customize. That's ready to be saved. Um, but before we do, the next thing I like to do is just add a little bit of a different color. Now you don't need to do this. There's no real reason for it, but I sometimes like to have a few different versions of ZBrush installed so that I can use the copy that my students might be using. Um, also, you know, when you get a new version of ZBrush, it's nice to have a little bit of a facelift, like getting a new haircut, just feels kind of cool. Uh, so, so go to eye color and we can change all these different colors here. Now I only like to change these bright colors. So example to do that, we can go to our color palette here and select something off these menus. So let's do something I've never done before. Um, maybe a purple, I'm gonna real bright purple. Then we can go to preferences. And with that color selected there, all we need to do is click on the color swatches that we want to change to that color. So I'm just gonna do these ones. Now we can see we've got a nice purple here. I'm also gonna change the border color as well. But this one, I'm gonna make a little bit darker. Okay, so you might want to save your UI colors here. So I'm just gonna save this to desktop. Uh, and the next thing we can do is go to preferences, config and store config, and then also save UI. So I'm going to save this out. Now, if we restart ZBrush, so you can see when we restart ZBrush, it's come up with our UI colors and our custom buttons. Uh, but one thing you might notice is that the buttons from the top have not appeared, but that's because we are in draw mode. So if we select an object from our menu at the side here, drag that out on screen, you can see now that we have a 3D object in here, we've got our symmetry buttons back up. So we go to edit, put symmetry on and everything is working as it should be. 
Okay, so the next thing I want to do is change how our canvas loads when we start ZBrush up. So I don't like this tiny canvas. Um, I want it to be the actual size of the screen that I've got set up here. And I also want to change the background color. Some people really like this gradient, but I don't. I like it to just be a single flat color. First thing I'm going to do is just go to preferences and initialize ZBrush. That'll clear out everything and just keep our custom UI, but it'll also set the canvas to the screen size. And then I want to go to my color swatches here and select a color for my background. Uh, so I'm going to probably want to keep something fairly light and I'm also going to slightly tint it the color of my interface. And then we're going to go to document and down here where it says back this color swatch, if we select that, it'll change that to the color that we've selected in our color swatches. And then finally, to get rid of the gradient, we just need to slide this slider to zero. Okay, so that's now ready to be sculpted on. So we want to save this as the startup document. So to do that, we can go back to document and hit this button here, save as startup document. Okay, now if we close ZBrush and restart it, we can see ZBrush begins now with our document how we want it and with our custom mat caps and our custom brushes all loaded in and also our custom buttons. Now you can really customize ZBrush a lot more than this. You can make things transparent, you can make custom menus, you can do all sorts, but I find this to be a nice balance between the uh, default ZBrush and a few extra little things just to make life easier. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. And if you want to download my custom UI and my custom brushes and mat caps, I will link them down below. So thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.